I'm a science geek. I will say that right off the bat. I love science. I'm a skeptic. I love pointing out when people are wrong. Um, I know that makes me the annoying guy. I get it. I'm annoying. I get it. Um, but I, I just, I can't help it when people say stuff that, that's wrong. Like the other day, my friend comes up and he goes, hey man, I'm going to be a father. I was like, oh, congratulations. He goes, whoa, 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 hold on. It was an accident. I'm like, oh, well, you know what they say, man, sometimes condoms break. He goes, no, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't wearing a condom. I'm like, well, you know what? The pill, it's 98% effective. You could have been, you know, the 2% that slipped through the crack. You know, no pun intended, right? And, uh, and he goes, uh, no, 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 she wasn't on the pill. I was like, dude, 2015 and you're still using the rhythm method? And he goes, the what? I was like, all right, why don't you tell me what happened? And then we can go from there, right? And he goes, well, uh, all right, so, you know, my, my girl and I, we hadn't been out in a long time. And uh, so we went out and we were dancing, having a good time, drinking. We got it pretty messed up. And we came back to the house and, you know, we had sex. And I guess I didn't pull out quick enough. And I'm like, wow, your accidental pregnancy sounds almost identical to my wife and I's intended pregnancy. All right. <laughs> I'm like, this word accident? I do not think it means what you think it means, okay? Like, right, like, when I hear accidental pregnancy, I'm expecting a story. I'm expecting, like, what happened? Well, I was masturbating on the sidewalk, um, like I do every Sunday. And um, my girlfriend was upstairs, and she was taking a shower, and she got robbed at gunpoint of all of her clothes, and she came running down, chasing the assailant. She was all wet and soapy and naked, and as she ran past me, she slipped and did a backflip, landed right on my penis right as I ejaculated, I'm going to be a father. I'd be like, wow, that's an accidental pregnancy. But if you ran, if I say what happened to this accidental pregnancy and you say, I got drunk and did it, that's not, like, do you realize that penis plus vagina equals baby, right? That's like, if you, if you had the Betty Crocker cookbook of babies that pe penis into vagina mix well, that's the recipe, right? When you say that that's your, this is what I hear. You might as well have said, hey man, last night I came home and I accidentally baked a cake. <laughs> How'd that happen? Well, I was messed up, man. I was drinking a lot, and I came home, and I, you know, preheated the oven to 400 degrees, and I uh, got a bowl out from the pantry, and I, uh, I threw in some flour and some eggs and some milk and some sugar and some vanilla for taste, of course, and then I, I, I mixed that up. I, I blended till smooth, as they say, and then I, uh, I accidentally poured that into a greased pan, and uh, I put that into the oven, and... 45 minutes later, now you're not gonna believe this, but uh, there was a cake in there. Like, whoa, what kind of cake? I told you it was an accident, I don't know. Well, can I have some of it? No, I accidentally ate it. And if I accidentally gain weight, I'm gonna be pissed. Could you go to Maury? Could you show up on Maury? Like, I tell you what, Maury, I don't even know the recipe to a cake. I don't know how to bake no damn cake, and that ain't my damn cake. Well, we're gonna find out right now. We've got the results. Ian Harris, you are the baker of this cake. <laughs> that ain't my cake. But that cake don't even look like me, Maury. Look at it, it's got chocolate frosting. Oh. <laughs> that ain't my cake. <laughs> I am. Uh, I, I, I love pointing out, like, like I'm not an alternative medicine guy. I think it's BS, but I'm, a, I'm okay with it if you can prove it to be safe and effective through scientific means. That's how we prove medicine to work, right? They don't, the alternative medicine, you know what they do? They hide behind the dietary supplement label so they don't have to prove their effectiveness. If you know what I'm talking about, like a couple years ago, there was the over-the-counter cure for the common cold. It's called Airborne, and they got sued for $23 million because they faked all of their clinical trials. And I don't know how anybody was fooled by this in the first place. You guys remember the commercials? The commercials alone tip me off, right? Airborne, take it to the first sign of a cold, developed by a teacher who was tired of getting sick. That's all it takes? 200 years of medical research and all we needed was one teacher who was mad as hell. Well, I'm not gonna take this anymore. How great would it be if we could solve all of our problems that way, right? Like, like perpetual motion finally invented by a hillbilly who'd run out of gas. I tell you what, man, I was driving my goddamn El Camino down the dang freeway, man. That thing just took a dump right there on me, man. It just took the pooper right in the middle of it. I didn't have no gas, I didn't have no red money. I didn't have a red cent to my name, and I said to myself right there, and I said, you know what you need to do, Cletus? You need to invent yourself one of them zero-point energy machines. Yeah, I said, screw this combustion crap, all right? That's what I said. I said, screw combustion. Now, cut to, here I am, four years later, Nobel Prize in physics. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> 
By the way, Airborne has a cartoon on the box. Would you trust medication with a cartoon? If you went to pick up your lithium or what? No, I don't know why I pointed to you when I said lithium. But you might be, who knows? You look like something. Uh, no, no, if you went to pick up your lithium, your Prozac, whatever you're on specifically, and there was like Calvin and Hobbes on there, and Hobbes had his arm around Calvin. It was like, once you take this, you'll no longer be able to hear me. Would you buy it? Of course not, right? But my friend's always like, well, there's your problem right there, man. It's big pharma keeping all the cures down. Because, you know, they're, they're, there's a cure for cancer, AIDS, everything, but there's too much money in the treatment, you're never going to see it. And I'm like, I don't know if that's true. I'm not a big conspiracy fan, a conspiracy theorist at all. But I would say this, you know what makes it seem a little bit uh, less to me? Is that they use that same exact conspiracy theory for male enhancement products. <laughs> Enzyme extends hero taps. We've got the formula that'll make your penis bigger and thicker and fuller than any penis in history. We've got the formula the drug companies don't want you to know about. Wait, why do the why do the drug companies care how big my dick is? That's what I want to know, right? I mean, I can understand if the psychiatric industry was behind it, because they have something to lose, right? <laughs> Fellow psychiatrists, we have got to do something about this penis-growing formula. Ever since men's junk is bigger, we've lost 75% of our clients. Depression in men is virtually cured. And now women are beginning to cheer up as well. <laughs> we need to get these phalluses down to a depressing size. Johnson, you've got a small one. Give us the answer. <laughs> no, folks, there is no cure for a small penis. Uh, we're going to have to wait for one NASCAR fan to finally get angry enough to put an end to all of our suffering. <laughs> small penis finally cured. By a Corvette owner. Who was tired of was tired of... All right. Uh, yeah, I uh, like as much as I love science. I don't like science-based TV shows, and I don't mean documentaries. I mean like like the like the CSIs and the SVUs, those dramas that are science-based. You know why? Because in order to explain the science to the idiots like us that watch the shows, they have to explain it to the other characters in the show. So it just comes off like bad dialogue. You know what I'm talking about? Have you seen these shows where like two forensic detectives and they walk into a crime scene and the ones like. Huh. Looks like the murderer covered his tracks pretty good. Shampooed the carpets, even painted the walls. This is luminol. It bonds to the proteins in blood. I spray this all around the room, and though we can't see it with the naked eye, when I turn on this black light, this entire crime scene is going to become evident. I always want the other one to go, yeah, I know, asshole. I'm your partner. Like, you, you, you forget that we've worked together for 20 years? You don't think I know what, how luminal... Did you, did you not remember that we went to college together? We were roommates. You cheated off me in pathology class. You don't remember this? Oh, yeah, that's right. You were too busy taking dance classes. Uh, yeah, don't tell me how luminal works, okay, pal? Right? I, I just... They're so, they don't really... They're like, I see this one. They're like, dumbing it down more and more. The guy picks it up like this in, in the thing. He picks up this thing and he goes... 32 shell casing. You know, if the uh, assailant wasn't wearing gloves, he might have left his prints on this. We send this back to the lab, and if it matches any known fingerprint in our system, we've got our shooter. It's like, whoa, slow down, Columbo. Let me get a pen. Uh, you're telling me that our fingers leave distinct prints? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you say so. It sounds like voodoo to me, but you're the expert. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think if we talked like that in our real daily lives, if we were real lives, if we talked like that, if you're like about to have sex with your girl, you're like, look, honey, just get up on the bed, get naked. I'm going to put on this. It's known as a condom. It acts as a latex barrier between my sperm and your egg. I'm going to put this over my penis, then I'm going to put my penis into your vagina. I'm going to move my hips back and forth in a rhythmic fashion. If I can do this for long enough at the right tempo, it should result in a euphoric sense for both of us that will eventually end in what is referred to as an orgasm. <laughs> now, of course, if I didn't have to wear this condom, that sense of euphoria would be greatly heightened. However, the impending orgasm might result in an accidental pregnancy. 